conservation of momentum. So it turns out that the momentum of a system is conserved as long as there is no external net force acting on any part of the system. Um, we call this kind of system where no net external force acts an isolated system. So in isolated systems, the momentum of the system is conserved. The way that we can write this is that the total momentum of a system at the beginning, PI, is equal to the total mom momentum of the system at the end, PF. Um, this is most often applied in situations where there's collisions. Uh, in collisions, we often view it as two objects interacting and everything around them is having very little effect. So there's no net force from the outside. There's only the two objects interacting with each other. So nothing is, is affecting it from the outside. So it's an isolated system. Um, we also apply this in situations where we have recoil from a gun, and we'll see an example of that a little bit later. Um, and if you look at the equation, PI equals PF, it might remind you of energy conservation in a closed system where we had EI equals EF. And it is a very similar idea. So let's see a couple uh, examples of, of, of the application of conservation of momentum. Let's say we have a lump of clay and it is moving toward a block and the lump of clay is going to impact and stick to the block. The lump of clay initially is moving at 10 meters per second to the right and it has a mass of one kilogram. The block is initially at rest and it has a mass of four kilograms. Um, and then after the impact the clay is stuck to the box and they move off together. So we want to figure out what that velocity is, the velocity of the lump of clay in the box after um, the impact. So this is a collision. Nothing externally is applying a net force to either one of them during the impact. So PI equals PF. So let's look at PI. Well, that's the initial momentum of the system. Okay, well, we have a lump of clay and it has a momentum. So let's write that down. Um, and then we have to add the momentum of the block. Well, the momentum of the block is zero at the beginning because it's not moving. And that has to equal the momentum of the system at the end. Well, at the end, the two objects are combined, and so there's a total mass of five kilograms, right? clay mass plus block mass. And they move off together, so they have the same velocity. So it's like one big object with a mass of five kilograms multiplied by their combined, or their um, identical velocity, Vf. Um, and if we solve that, we can find that Vf is 2 meters per second, and we get a positive value, which means it moves off to the right. Okay, so we solved that. We found their velocity. Uh, let's try another example. Let's say we have two um, spheres, and they're approaching each other. The sphere on the left, let's see, that one's going to move 3 meters per second east, and it has a mass of one kilogram. And the other one has a velocity of two meters per second west, and it has a mass of two kilograms. Um, and then they collide, and we know that this ball, this sphere, moves off at one meter per second, or excuse me, 1.5 meters per second to the west after the impact. We want to figure out what the velocity of the other one is. Okay, so let's apply momentum conservation. This is a collision, momentum is conserved. So, hmm. The momentum of the system at the beginning, well, the momentum of the first sphere, we can figure that out, and the momentum of the second sphere, we can figure that out, and we add it together. So that's the total momentum at the beginning. And that has to equal the total momentum at the end. Well, at the end, we know the momentum of one of the spheres. We can figure that out. And then the other sphere, well, its momentum is the mass times the velocity. So we can write down an expression for that. And now we have enough information to figure out the velocity of the second sphere. So we go through the math, 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 math. And the final velocity of the other sphere is 0 0.250 meters per second. And it's positive, so that means it's to the east. Okay. And the last example we'll look at is a, a cannon shooting a cannonball. And we're going to have a cannon and cannonball that start out at rest. Okay, it's before they've been fired. Uh, and then you fire the cannon, 
and the cannonball comes out and let's say the cannonball has a mass of five kilograms and it moves out at 30 meters per second to the north. Now, if you've ever seen a cannon being fired or a gun being fired, a rifle, anything like that, there's always a kickback. There's a recoil. Um, the thing, the gun or the cannon that was fired will always move in the opposite direction from the cannonball or bullet. So we want to figure out how fast the cannon is going to recoil after the cannonball has been fired from it. Well, we can use momentum conservation because the cannon and the cannonball interact, but nothing from the outside is interacting or is applying a net force anyway with, uh, uh, with the cannon or cannonball. So let's say the mass of the cannon is 150 kilograms, mass of the cannonball is five meters, five kilograms, and it's moving at 30 meters per second to the north. Well, initially the momentum was zero. Okay, so we know PI. PF, that's the total momentum at the end. Well, we can figure out the momentum of the cannonball, and then we just have to add the momentum of the cannon. And that's enough for us to solve for the final velocity of the cannon. And it turns out that if you solve for it, the cannon will have a velocity that is negative, and that means it's to the south. So the cannonball moves to the north, and the cannon recoils to the south. And we can explain that using conservation of momentum.